What's going on YouTube? Mr. Wheels here once again bringing you another episode of Sports Talk. And with the Stanley Cup playoffs starting tomorrow night, I thought I would do a playoff preview of both the Eastern Conference and the Western Conference. This video is going to be um, previewing the Eastern Conference uh, playoff matchups. And then I will do another one for the Western Conference uh, right after this. So make sure you like up uh, this video and subscribe. I would really appreciate the support. So let's get right into it. Um, obviously, I got my Detroit Red Wings uh, Pavel Datsyuk jersey on. Um, I'm really excited about the uh, the playoff series between Detroit and Boston. Now, this is uh, between the first team in the Eastern Conference and the first wild card team. So I'm sure there's a lot of people out there saying, "Oh, you know, Boston's going to just roll over them." Well, you know, let's not forget that Boston. Although they do have a significant edge, in my opinion, in goal with Tuka Rask versus Jimmy Howard, I think Boston easily has the edge there. Um, Boston's going to be without Dennis Seidenberg for probably at least the first round of the playoffs. They do have Andre Mazaros, who is still a fellow countryman of uh, Zidane Chara, but Chara works better with Seidenberg. He's played with him for longer, so... Not having Seidenberg is going to, in my opinion, it's going to affect uh, Boston's play a little bit. Um, Daniel Paye is also inj injured. Um, he might miss the first, most of the first round. Um, let's not forget that compared to the team last year that beat Toronto, um, they're without Tyler Sagan, no Andrew Ferentz, um, no Nathan Horton. Now, I mean, with that team, with those guys from that are missing from this team this year, that team that beat Toronto last year it took them seven games. And so looking at Detroit, you know, where Detroit has an advantage is they're an underdog. They had to fight to get into the playoffs. They've been playing playoff hockey for about a month. I think Detroit can win this series in about seven games. It's going to be a seven-game series if Detroit wins. But anything can happen. And even though Boston has home ice advantage, Detroit, if they get a split in Boston, those first two games, it could be over in six. Now, Boston, on the other hand, if they really come out strong and, you know, get scoring from everywhere, it could be over in four or five. Um, it will really depend on whether... Um, Gustav Nyquist and all the rest of the role players for Detroit um, who have been stepping up as of late. They need to do the same in this playoff series if Detroit's going to have a chance. I'm saying Detroit in seven because I'm a Detroit fan. Um, could be Boston in six or seven as well. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, let's move on to Montreal, Tampa Bay. Um, now, I'm sure a lot of people favor Montreal in this series, but I'm pulling for Tampa Bay because I think the way they've played without Steven Stamkos and losing Martin Saint-Louis this season, they've been through adversity all season and, you know, I'm even surprised that they're in the playoffs, but they found a way to win. And Montreal, on the other hand, have this so far this season, they've been at the top of the league at some points during the season, playing really well, but then there's also uh, they've had games where They've just, they've lost it. You know, they've made mistakes. Um, P.K. Subban especially has been, like, hot and cold this season. And in my opinion, Montreal's kind of limping into the playoffs a little bit. Um, they've let too many close games slip by, and this will be a close series. Um, I'm going to say Tampa Bay in probably about seven games. It could be over as quickly as... Five or six, though. Don't be surprised if Montreal, if they don't play well, I'm saying this series could be over in five. Most likely it'll go six or seven, and in my opinion, it'll be in favor of Tampa Bay. Now, not to take anything away from Montreal, they do have Carey Price in net, whereas Tampa Bay has um, Archers Limbach and uh, Ben Bishop. But those, those two guys are capable goalies. And let's not forget that a few years ago, um, Montreal 
picked Yaroslav Halak over Carey Price, and they went to the conference final. Um, I'm still saying Tampa Bay, even despite Carey Price. It will depend on Montreal's success. They have to get scoring from their top guys. P.K. Subban has to look like the Norris Trophy winner that he was last season, even in a, a shortened season, um, if Montreal is going to have a chance. If Montreal does win this, I don't see it being in any less than seven games. That's just my opinion. I am not a Montreal fan, so I'm not saying they can't win, but it'll it'll be in seven if they do. Um, let's move on to the Rangers in Philadelphia. Um, I like the Rangers in this series solely for the fact that they have Hen Hendrik Lundqvist in net. He is an elite goaltender. Um, you know, I'm not overly impressed with uh, the Rangers' offense, but they do have Rick Nash and and some other players that can score goals. They're going to be a, they have to make up to be a gritty playoff team. Um, so the, in my opinion, I could see the Rangers winning this series in probably about six or seven games, most likely seven. Um, but don't count out Philadelphia. They do. Philly does not have an edge in, in goal. Steve Mason and Ray Emery, it's like the blind leading the blind to me. Um, but however, I would take Philadelphia's defense and offense um, to counter the Rangers in this series if Philadelphia plays well. You've got Claude Giroux, um, Wayne Simmons, uh, Jakub Voracek, uh, Scotty Hartnell. If those guys carry the load and play well, then Philadelphia has a chance, no doubt, in this in this series. They can win as quickly as six games, uh, depending on how well Hendrik Lundqvist plays. But either way, I think that series uh, goes seven games, no matter who wins. Um, let's move on to Pittsburgh and Columbus. Now, the obvious pick in this situation would be Pittsburgh, um, but let's not forget that Evgeny Malkin is um, still hurt. He might be back for the first round. They're hoping he'll be ready, but who knows. Um, this leaves a little bit of an opening for Columbus. I think they have... I think Columbus has an edge in, in goal if Sergei Bobrovsky plays well. I like, I you know, I've always had a love-hate relationship with um, Mark andre Fleury. Um, if he plays well in, the, like, even if he just plays okay in this series, Pittsburgh will have a chance because they've got offense up to Ying Yang. Um, but um, don't count Columbus out. They do have... Um, you know, Nathan Horton, Ryan Johansson, Mark Wittes, too. They've got guys that can... I know they're not... They might not be elite players to some people, but they've got enough scoring, um, in my opinion. And they've got um, an okay defense as well. Um, so, you know, I, I'm i really conflicted um, in this series, but I'm going to probably say Pittsburgh in six because if... Uh, Chris Kunitz and James Neal play the way they're capable of playing. This series could be over in uh, uh, in six games very quickly, in very convincing fashion uh, for Pittsburgh. Um, it will depend on how their offense plays and whether they can keep the puck out of their net. But I'm saying Pittsburgh in six. So um, please like up this video. Tell me what you think. Um, I want to know who you who you think is going to win the cup. Um, out of the East, I'm going to say uh, probably Boston and Pittsburgh in the conference final. I will do videos throughout the playoffs, but stay tuned for uh, my Western Conference preview. And please, like always, like and subscribe. I will see you next.